We need to talk about TikTok, VPNs, and the Restrict Act. There is a lot of information being thrown around about this bill, so let's break it down, get to the facts, and why this act is so concerning. This bill did not come out of nowhere. The US government has been trying to ban TikTok for literal years at this point. TikTok is a huge social media platform with over 150 million US users. That number was confirmed by the CEO of TikTok a couple of weeks ago. And it's also got 1 billion users worldwide, which means it overtakes Snapchat, Pinterest, and Twitter. Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube right here have larger user bases currently. But according to Pew Research, TikTok is the only social media platform who's seen an increase in percentage of users who go to that platform to get news. But TikTok is owned by a company called ByteDance, which is a Chinese company who also made a TikTok clone app for mainland land China, which looks very similar, but it has different content. Because TikTok's parent company is Chinese-based and many worry that they are sharing data with the Chinese government, many countries, not just the US, have been trying to ban it for years. Many Middle Eastern countries banned it early on with Europe, the US, and Canada issuing bans of TikTok on government devices, and even some colleges have also banned it on campus Wi-Fi or university-owned machines. Donald Trump signed an executive order to ban TikTok in 2020, but this was later revoked and replaced by President Biden. But the question is, why? Is it just because this is a Chinese-owned product, or is it actually sharing U.S. user data with the Chinese government? Now, Citizen Lab Research did a huge whopping analysis. It's very long. I did read the whole thing. <laughs> but they looked at TikTok code to find any security or privacy issues. But overall, they found that the app matched industry norms, with US data collection aligning with other social media applications. Last month, ByteDance had also proposed strengthened privacy for users to align with the basic principles of Europe's leading privacy law, which is GDPR. But none of this means that TikTok is the golden child of data privacy. TikTok has had problems too. TikTok did come under fire when four employees were found accessing location data of journalists in 2022. Forbes also reported on some physical location surveillance in October of 2022. All of these links are down below. Now, these reports made the scrutiny of TikTok much more heightened in the last few months. Enter the Restrict Act. Now, this bill is proposed legislation that was introduced to the U.S. Senate on March 7th of this year by Senator Mark Warner, who is a member of the Democratic Party serving the Virginia seat. I am directly linking the bill down below just in case you want to read it like I did, but I am making this video so that you don't have to, though I still think you should for your own education. So let's get into it. S-686, which is the Restrict Act, is dubbed the TikTok Ban Bill, and it stands for Restricting the emergence of security threats that risk information and communications technology act. So the TLDR on this bill is it was written, quote, to authorize the Secretary of Commerce to review and prohibit certain transactions between persons in the United States and foreign adversaries and for other purposes. OK, that's pretty vague. It does point out some definitions. The Restrict Act specifically points out foreign adversaries to include, unless removed by the secretary, they do have that authorization. But right now it includes China, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Russia, and Venezuela. The act also explains the entities would include ones that have over a million US-based users, have sold over a million units to US persons, or controls, owns, or manages information and communications technology products or services. And that means any hardware, software, or other products or services intended to do things like data processing, storage, retrieval, or communications by electronic means. So that could put any parts of the information and communications technology and services supply chain under the microscope of this bill. It is very important to note that person 
this is a very important part. Person is defined in this bill as any natural person, including a citizen or national of the US or a foreign country. The act also explains that the government could identify and take action on products or services that could have catastrophic effects on critical infrastructure, the digital economy, could interfere with election results, et cetera, et cetera. No later than 180 days, the government can do a review, see if the product or service falls within any of those risky categories and determine whether it should be prohibited or if any other actions should take place. So the procedure to determine if something is a risk is to conduct a review, then refer it to the president and the president would have the power to take any actions that they deem necessary associated with this risk. Then the president, no later than 30 days after the referral from the secretary, would make an announcement about whatever actions they want to take and then enforcement would take place. And depending on the jurisdiction for the risk, certain agencies would handle that execution like Homeland Security would remove them or the FCC could revoke a license or CISA could execute removal. So what services would be considered under these imposed restrictions? They list a lot of tech. There's a lot in here. So that would include anything that is used in critical infrastructure or telecommunication services like wireless LANs, mobile networks, satellites, cable and wireless access points, networking systems, edge computing, plus anything used for data hosting or computing, quote, with respect to greater than 1 million US persons, like internet hosting services or cloud-based services, machine learning, content delivery, and managed services. But that's not all. They go on to list things like webcams, like physical devices, webcams, sensors, surveillance and monitoring equipment, home networking, UAVs and drones, apps, both for desktop desktop and mobile, that's where TikTok comes in, autonomous systems, robotics, AI, computing, e-commerce. If it exists, it's probably written in there somewhere. The act also explains how they can add or remove foreign adversaries on the list and how they can issue subpoenas. As it is written, services or products under investigation may have to turn over user data to the US government while under review. As for penalties, the act specifically says that no person may engage, aid in violations, solicit or attempt a violation, conspire or act in concert with one or more persons to do anything that constitutes a violation. No person shall engage in acts that evade provisions of this act, and no person shall fail to comply with reporting or record keeping in accordance with the act. And reminder, again, person was defined as citizens of the US or foreign country. Now, civil penalties for violations include a fine of up to $250,000 or an amount that is up to twice the value of the transaction and revocation of mitigation measures. Criminal penalties include a fine of up to 1 million USD or 20 years in prison or both. Yeah. So while the bill does not ban personal use, at least it doesn't seem like it does, but maybe? It does give agencies the authority to remove products from store shelves, stop them from shipping products into the US, or remove applications from the app stores. It also targets more than just TikTok. Huawei, Kaspersky, those have been noted as targets too by government officials. But as of yet, the US government has not shared any information publicly to justify a ban on TikTok in the app stores. But under under the Restrict Act, they would not necessarily need to share that information publicly if they did find something. For example, the executive branch would not need to explain its application of the law if it's not practical or consistent with national security and law enforcement interests. And what are those interests? Well, we don't know because the bill did not define those. Yeah, it's too vague. So people are rightfully worried about using a VPN to access TikTok or other banned apps or services. Even though the bill is supposed to target companies, it does not point blank say that regular users would not get caught up in the legal system. In fact, it does sound very much like persons like me and you, could get into trouble. Currently, how this bill is written, it does sound like any person who evades mitigation measures 
could be prosecuted as a criminal, and since it is so vague, that could include using a VPN to access a banned app or sideloading an app outside of the App Store. It also sounds like you could get into trouble if you visit another country and you download an application while overseas and maybe you forget to delete it when you enter the States, all of which was pointed out by the EFF. And something that I started thinking about while I was writing this research is how would an average consumer know if an app is made by a company from a country that's listed as a foreign adversary without doing some digging? Not every company who sells products in the United States will have so much news and media pointed at them like little fingers practically every single day like TikTok has. We all know that TikTok is owned by ByteDance now, but we don't know what company owns every single product that is sold in the United States by one of these foreign adversaries. Now, the good thing is that if you just use a VPN for general use, like for general privacy while on public Wi-Fi, if you wanna stream an Australian TV show or buy something from Japan, I buy stuff via a VPN all the time from Japan, then I think you're good. Also, the bill has not been passed yet, so hopefully they will make some changes to the verbiage so it isn't as broad or so it can't be taken out of context. See, if the government wants to protect U.S. citizens from actual threats to our privacy, then they should be creating legislation federally that protects personal data as a whole umbrella that all social media platforms need to abide by instead of just using TikTok as some may say a scapegoat. Some states have already enacted their own laws like CCPA. So if you live in those states, you do have some data protections, but many of us are left out in the cold. While they are trying to ban TikTok over here, some other social media platforms sell and share our data consistently and constantly and those ones have been built by U.S. companies. Many of these platforms sell our data to data brokers for a profit too, so banning TikTok for possibly sharing data with the Chinese government, which again, has not been proven, while we are already having our social media sites selling our data, seems a little bit hypocritical of our US government trying to pass this law. Now that brings me to my sponsor, Delete Me. We do not have those federal laws to protect data privacy. So these data brokers do exist and they also sell and share our data too without our consent. It's pretty messed up but they are allowed to do it in the US. So I have a solution, it's called Delete Me. It's a service that I have paid for for years, so I am so glad to partner with them. Delete Me is the trusted online privacy service that removes your personal information from data broker websites so you can take control of that data. They do all of the work for you, scouring the internet, making sure that your information is deleted from those sites so you can keep your personal life private. When you sign up for an account, you fill in any data that you want Delete Me to find and delete for you, and then Delete Me continuously checks data brokers for matches and does all the work to send opt-outs and removal requests. With Delete Me, you can protect your identity, your family, and your online presence. They provide regular updates and a comprehensive privacy report so you can see the results of their work every single quarter. Do not let your personal information be at risk. You can use the code SNUBS at checkout, that's S-N-U-B-S, for 20% off any of the consumer plans, or just click the link down below and hit up joindeleteme.com slash morse code to sign up today, and that code will automatically apply at checkout. Sign up now and safeguard your personal information today, and a huge thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. I have my sweet tea here because I'm about to drop some tea. Now, I don't understand TikTok as a elder millennial. I kind of like that slogan, elder millennial. It sounds like a video game character. TikTok is not my platform of choice. It's not my cup of tea. I have tried. <laughs> I have a profile, but I just have not been able to figure it out as a content creator. I lean towards saying that we should absolutely scrutinize TikTok to protect users, but we also need to protect our rights to information with the understanding that people use the internet in very different ways than they did 10 years ago. There have been several research papers and surveys done about this, but 
In many of those, you will find that social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, TikTok are now in the top categories for search engines, which means that people are going to social media more than they are traditional search engines to find information. In my job, I analyze how folks interact with my videos every single day. I see a need for short educational content as well as longer formats like this video that you're watching right now. I understand why TikTok is so popular. It's got educational content, it's got funny videos, it's got some memes trickled in there, and sometimes some really bad false information, but other applications do too. The difference is TikTok's user base is exploding. So it seems like you either love it. In fact, TikTok user bases often are seen to be logged in and using the application actively far longer per day than any other platform. Or you don't care if it disappeared one day because you don't use it. Or maybe you tried and you just couldn't get into it like, like me. So would banning TikTok, since we haven't seen proof of government data collection, set up any kind of precedent of banning any other apps or services that fall under the Restrict Act categories without seeing proof to justify those restrictions? Could people be prosecuted for using a VPN to access their favorite apps, especially when they don't even often know who made those apps? Comment your thoughts, subscribe if you like deeply researched videos like this one. Bye y'all.